There was an article in Gawker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess you've seen it. Yeah. And, and, and the reason why I came. Uh, you're a controversial figure. Um, I guess a big what, black person. You, <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. How did your Berkeley um, uh, fellows handle the, their thing to censor you and so on? Yeah. Kind of Anybody here have a uh, young ears? So what she's talking about, and let me be careful how I say this, because I know, I know they're trying to sue me for things that I say, was the company, and among the many things that they would do in psychologically profiling me, they came up with a number of things that essentially were like a list of things that would piss off a black guy. I'm not joking. It's, so they held focus groups to figure out things that would upset me. And so these guys would come, and they would whisper things in my ear. Like if I was getting ready to testify before Congress, they would threaten to lynch me, or they would you know, question my sexuality, or they would say, your wife and daughter are home alone, don't you worry about that. So they would say, and, and say kind of lewd and vulgar things into my ear. And so what's coming up now is I responded to some of those by email. I may have used the F word a little bit. Um, <laughs> never from a And so what happened was they ended up publishing some of those emails, and a lot of them was sort of poetry. People call it rap, but you know, Dr. Seuss didn't rap, he rhyme. But if you're black and you rhyme, it's rap. But anyway, let's <laughs> But some of it was in rhyme, and, and some of it, you know, I used some bad words. You know, that's, that's where I grew up. And so what they decided to do was to publish that as if I were attacking them when they were the ones threatening me with sexual assault and things like that. And yeah, I said it, and I approved it. So if you're here, keep going at me, and it'll come out. So um, I woke up one morning to Gawker, and I think the headline was, Berkeley professor tells company, I ain't scared of you motherfuckers. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, what's happening now? <laughs> it was very really awful. Right, so so, so they, they wrote a letter, they wrote an ethics complaint to the university. You know, my dean calls me in, I'm like, oh. And, and, and what I did was, it's very interesting. I said, okay, I said, one, I never sent an email from a university computer or from a university account. It's none of your business. If I cuss at my neighbor because he's blocking my driveway, it's none of your business. And the other way that I was justified in that is that I had gone to the university lawyer, and I had showed them emails. I had said, look, these guys are threatening me. The FBI was called at one case in one point because the, this guy threatened to have me lynched. He said, when you go, I used to run a lot. He said, when you go running, I'm going to have some of my good old boys come show you what it's like to be gay. And, and, a, and a senator in Illinois overheard that, called the FBI, had a police escort. I went to my university and to the lawyer, and the lawyer said to me, that's your problem. He said, I represent the university, not you. And I looked him straight in the eye. Chris Patty's his name. I'll call anybody out, put him on blast. I looked him in the eye, I said, Universitas from the Latin is a collection of scholars, of students, and teachers. Who is this university? What is this entity that you represent that does not include me? And he said, my job is to protect the university from liability. So that's how I responded. I said, well, they're going to come at me. I'm going to come at them. And so when I went back after this, I said, don't call me in your office. Because I asked you for help, and you said it was my problem. So I dealt with my problem, my way, and they dropped it. They did then write a letter to the company saying, look, we've seen the documents. We know that you've said these things to him. You leave him alone as well. So they filed another ethics complaint. And apparently they can't even take my publications away as much as they can. Who I was raised, I don't care. And I know that as long as they're coming at me that I'm on the right track. I also know that no matter what they do, and I've said this to them, I'm in charge. Because as long as I'm working on this, you have to work on me. I could go home tomorrow and say, no, I'm not going to do any more research. I have tenure I'm going to teach. It's my choice. But you have to do what I do. So, you know, there are little things like that. And I'm interested in the science. I mean, anyway, I could go on all night about uh, the personal things that motivate me, working with my students. The things that they put out there are just lies. Data can't be repeated. It's been repeated all over the world. We published it. Didn't share the raw data. They own the raw data. They saw every piece of it. The EPA was in my lab and saw it. It's just a lie. John Enton even has in his article, I saw it going around, what's the high, Hawaii, what's the, the Hawaii Independent or what is it? The Hawaii Free Press. The Hawaii Free Press. They've even published that thing from John yeah. Enton saying I was fired from the university. Right. I have tenure, I can't get fired. I mean, it's, it's things that just aren't true. Publishing things like I'm a high paid expert witness. The only entity that's ever paid me personally that I've gotten financial gain from working on Atrazine was Novartis and Gentile. Period. <laughs> I didn't get paid anything for the court. I did work for them. I did review literature. I did pull up papers. I did work, but I didn't take a dime. And that's why I got free representation now from one of the biggest law firms in the country. That's not why I did it, but you know, that's a karma thing, I guess. <laughs>